ions. I mentioned that metals tend to lose electrons when they react with other elements, and nonmetals tend to gain electrons. What happens when an atom gains or loses electrons is that it then forms a charged particle. We talked about um, the structure of the atom, the nuclear theory, that we've got protons and neutrons. In the nucleus, the protons have a plus one charge. And outside of the nucleus are the electrons, and they have a negative one charge. And there's an equal number of electrons and protons, and so an atom has no net electrical charge. If it loses an electron, though, now it's got one less electron than protons, and it will have a positive charge. If it gains an electron, it will have a negative charge. Um, we have special names for these guys. Positive ions are called cations, not cations, cations. And negative ions are called anions, not anion, which sounds like a relative of an onion. So the negative ones, there's an extra N in anion. Cations, if you like cats, uh, I have positive feelings for cats, so cations are positive. Um, that helps me remember it. I have to figure out something to help you remember that. When we write the symbol for an ion, we indicate the charge of the ion. So we'll use the element symbol, and then we'll write the charge as a superscript on the right. And we generally write the number, the magnitude of the charge first, and then the sign. And that's different than what we do in math with exponents. So here's an example. Lithium is a metal. Lithium tends to lose an electron when it reacts and forms a positive cation. Now, chemists have a thing against the number one. So for a lithium one plus ion, we write the, sim the sign the plus, but we don't write the one. You wouldn't do that in math, right? If you had something raised to the first power in math, you just wouldn't write anything. So for these ions, we always write the charges, always a plus or a minus. If we look at, um, well, we'll get to that. What the charge is depends on how many electrons were lost or gained. So. Um, the ion charge is going to be the number of protons, those are the positive charges, minus the number of electrons, which is the negative charges. So for lithium plus ion, it has three protons, two electrons. So three minus two is a one plus charge. Um, fluorine gains one electron. It's a nonmetal, that's what nonmetals do. And so we write the symbol for the fluorine ion with a negative superscript. It's negative one, but chemists don't like to write the number one, so we just write the negative sign. And again, the ion charge is the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So fluoride ion has nine protons. The fluorine atom has nine electrons, and so nine minus nine is zero. But when it gains an electron, now it has 10 electrons, 9 minus 10 is negative 1. So it's got a 1 minus charge. So let's look at um, these different ions and determine their charges. So what would the charge be on a nickel ion with 26 electrons? Well, how many protons does a nickel atom have? 28. We get that from the periodic table. So it's got 28 protons. And we're going to subtract the 26 electrons, and that's going to give us a positive 2. So if we're going to write the, the symbol for this ion, it's going to be Ni2+. plus. In math, you would write the, sim, the sign first and then the number. I think we're doing it opposite to make it look different from math. We don't want this to look like... Uh, some sort of a funny variable that's being raised to a power. This is a chemical symbol with a charge. How about bromine? How many protons does bromine have? Thirty-five. So to find the charge, we take the number of protons, we subtract the number of electrons, and we get minus one. 
So the symbol for bromine ion would be Br with a negative. I wouldn't mark it wrong if you put 1 minus, but I'd correct it because it looks funny. How about phosphorus? 15 protons, we're getting that from the periodic table. We subtract the number of electrons, get a negative 3 charge. So the symbol would be P3 minus. Any questions? So this exercise is giving us the symbol for an ion, S2 minus. Uh, there's more than one way to figure out the answer to this. They're asking us for the number of protons and the number of electrons. The number of protons is just on the periodic table. That's always the same. Every sulfur atom or ion has the same number. We look up there and it's 16. 16 protons. So you can use that little equation. You can say, well, 16 protons minus x electrons equals negative 2. And you could say, well, x must equal 18. So that means there's 18 electrons. That's one way to do it. The other way is to say, well, it's got 16 protons. It has a negative 2 charge. The number of electrons are what changes. So a negative 2 charge means that there's two extra negatively charged things, right? So there must be two more electrons than protons. It must be 18. So different ways to think about that. It's not hard math, but you just have to uh, figure out a way to think about it that makes sense to you. because. Any time a negative sign is involved, people do crazy things, right? Negatives make everything just kind of hard to think about. We can predict what sort of ions a lot of the atoms in the periodic table will form. And this is where the group number comes in handy. So the group number that's associated with the letter A above each of the main group elements 1 through 8, that gives us the number of valence electrons for the elements in that column. And we're going to talk more about valence electrons in a later chapter. For now, just think of valence electrons as being the outermost electrons. So it turns out that the electrons are arranged in, in different, you can think of them as shells or different layers around, kind of like the layers of an onion. The valence electrons are the ones on the outermost part of the atom. And though that's where we gain or lose electrons, is from the outer part. So the main group elements tend to form ions that are going to have the same number of valence electrons as the noble gases. So the noble gases are over here in group 8A. Group 8A. 8 tells us how many valence electrons they have. So how many valence electrons do these noble gases have? 8. 8 is kind of like a magic number when it comes to electrons. It's like the, the desired number. And so if we look at, well, let's look at fluorine. Fluorine is in group 7A. It's got 7 valence electrons. If it gained one electron, it would have eight, and it'd be happy. So I haven't really gotten into any of my crazy analogies yet, have I? I have a whole bucket full of um, just crazy analogies. My husband thinks some of them are really stupid, but that's OK, because when they're really stupid, you're more likely to remember them. So I think of the noble gases as being like the cool kids, the popular in-group in high school. I don't know if this happened at your high school, but it happened at mine. I was not one of them, as you can probably imagine. Those are the kids that just seem to have it all together. They're on the cheer squad, and they're captain of the football team, and they go to all the right parties, you know, and you're like, mm. oh, there's a whole bunch of people, though, that want to be like them, right? 
So how do you get to be like the popular people? You dress like them. That's probably the easiest thing, right? All the cool people, when I was going to school, they were wearing penny loafers and uh, polo shirts with the collars turned up and sweaters tied around their necks. It was very preppy, pink and green. It's crazy. Some of that's come back into style, which is very frightening. <laughs> but um, you try to look like the popular kids. Now, that's not going to guarantee that you're going to get into their crowd, but at least you can look like you belong, right? So how do these atoms try to look like the noble gases? Well, what's on the outside of the atom? It's the electrons. So if we could put on or take off electron clothing, then we can look like the noble gases. So here, you know, these guys, they might find a, an argyle sweater and tie it around their necks, right? And so they're putting on something extra that gives them a charge, um, but it makes them look electronically the way the noble gases do. So fluorine has eight, seven valence electrons. It wants to gain one so that it can look like neon. Chlorine wants to gain one electron so that it can have the same number of electrons as argon. And that is one explanation for why all of these ion, atoms, sorry, form minus one ions. The next group over, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium, they have six valence electrons. If they gain two electrons, then they have eight, which is the number that the valence, elect uh, valence electrons and noble gases have. So they're trying to get eight. Um, what about these guys over here? So how many valence electrons does lithium have? One. How many does sodium have? One. So if it wanted to be like argon, if sodium wanted to be like argon, it would have to gain seven electrons. That's a lot of electrons for it to gain. Well, I said that the electrons are kind of arranged sort of like the layers of an onion skin. So in his outer skin, sodium has one electron. But if you peel off that very partial layer, underneath is a full skin of eight electrons. So by losing that one extra electron, then sodium has the same number of electrons as neon does. And so it can be happy. It can say, hey, you know, I look like the cool kids now. Of course, there's a much fancier scientific explanation for that, but you probably don't care about that. And I don't care to share it with you right now. Magnesium has two valence electrons. It could gain six electrons, that's going to be kind of expensive energy-wise, or it could just lose those two, peel off that partial layer, and underneath is a nice full layer of eight electrons. So groups 1A and 2A form ions with the same charge as the group number. And these guys in group 3A do that as well. Aluminum has three valence electrons. It will lose all three of them to become like neon. The nonmetals, it's easier for them to gain an electron, and so they're going to go over this way. And so what I tell p students to predict the charge on oxygen is, well, start over here and count backwards. These guys need minus one charge. These guys need minus two charge. I don't know why they, oops. Uh, I don't know why they left phosphorus and nitrogen off there. Here's nitrogen. Guess what charge his is? Three minus, because he would need to gain three electrons. And here's phosphorus, and phosphorus also forms a three minus ion. So this, this column is not listed here because they do not form any ions, because they're perfect as they are. They don't need to change. These guys want to become like the noble gases, and so they'll gain one electron. These guys will gain two electrons. These guys will gain three electrons. Now. Um, these guys here in group four, they're, they're like exactly in the middle, and I guess you could say they're the nerds, and they're like, we don't even want to. We're not even <laughs> going to try. It's, it's hopeless, so we're just going to be ourselves. So maybe those are the most admirable, I don't know. But they don't really form ions at all. And then these metals, 
and these guys over here, they will lose electrons to become like the noble gases. Did that make any sense at all? Okay, good. So, based on their positions in the periodic table, what ions do potassium and selenium tend to form? Well, first of all, we need to know what's the symbol, element symbol for potassium? K. K. Where is potassium in the periodic table? What group? Group 1A. The group 1A metals form plus 1 ions. So this will be K plus. Selenium. That's SE. Now, you should memorize these, but what do you do if you didn't memorize them? Well, you can kind of guess, and sometimes it'll work. And that's better than not answering, which always gets you a zero. Well, selenium starts with S and E, so maybe SE would be a good choice. So SE is in which group? 6A. 6A. It's in group 6A. It does not form a 6-plus ion. minus. So the little trick that most students seem to like is look at the periodic table, find selenium. Go to the far right column, there's krypton in the noble gases. And then count backwards. Pl pretend you're playing a board game and you're starting at the far right and you're counting negative. Negative one to bromine, negative two to selenium. That's its charge. The other thing you can do is you can take the group number and subtract eight and that'll get you the charge, minus two. But you need to be able to predict those charges based on the periodic table. 